Bible says the message of the cross is foolishness. 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 Foolishness to those that are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Well, guys, what is going on? Welcome to the Foolishness Podcast. Many of you know what's going on. There's craziness, there's chaos, but we have to just continue going. I'm excited to jump into these interviews, get my friends on, even people I don't know. But today, I have a good brother in the Lord, someone that most of you will know, and many generations in skateboarding, royalty, tricks, kills it, rips it, shreds, looks a lot cooler than I do right now. <laughs> and my good brother, Pastor Eddie, what is going on? Hey, how's it going? Hey, Brian, it's great to be here. Great to be here. <laughs> you look, I mean, should I go get some hip glasses too, or uh, what? You're looking... I, well, you know what? I, I've always I've worn glasses for so long. Yeah. And so, and so um, ever since I started wearing, I would always switch them out. But when yeah. I started wearing the white ones, it's like people recognize that. Oh, the guy you with stand the stand out. Uh, yeah. So I just Good. Kind of, I don't know. Actually, I'm getting some new ones. You know, uh, uh, Mark Mothersbaugh from Devo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He has a line of glasses, like these cool glasses. Yeah. Just some of those. <laughs> just, well, I have, well, if I wear glasses, I want to like cool, right? I have a pastor friend in Costa Rica, and he's all tattooed up, and he's out in public, and he goes, you know, I don't want the attention. And I go, look, if in that small town people could recognize you and know that you're a pastor and know that you're available. So if you're the, the cool-looking skater pastor with the cool white Devo glasses, so be it. <laughs> But, you know, I know we're going to laugh and kick yeah. it, and we've had some amazing episodes up here. Um, I definitely want to unpa- unpack your past and the things that are relevant to so many listeners. But just as we even talked a minute ago, what is going on right now? You had some heavy church meetings, and you're just navigating because you pastor a C3 church. Uh, what is going on today for Eddie, and what's the current situation? Yeah, you know what? It's just – it's um, obviously what we're going through is – yeah. It's as old as since the beginning of time, mm-hmm. you know, the stuff that we deal with. And um, I think uh, I think now it's just becoming more visible because of the phones and recording mm-hmm. and, and social media. And so kind of now this generation is kind of beginning to see a lot more than what would happen mm-hmm. in the past. It would be yeah. censored. And so, you know, I even just the other day I called my uh, – and you said we're going to laugh and whatever. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. probably cry. Oh, wow. Um, but I called my sons and, and mm. their pastors here with us at the church. And, um, you know, I just wanted to talk to them because there's so many voices and so much that is out there. And I really want to be grounded. And whatever I do, it's kind of like, okay, God, I need to know that this is you. I don't want to say something just to say something. Yeah. And um, just like the Bible says, be quick to listen, slow to speak, Amen. So, slow to anger. So it's yeah. like you can speak too fast and all of a sudden this anger comes <laughs> out or whatever because you said maybe the wrong thing. So no, I was just talking to my, my kids and um, I just said, you know, maybe you guys are wondering why I'm kind of not really saying a lot right now. It's just because I just, I'm taking it in. Yeah. Uh, because they're very vocal because they're young and they yeah. realize and they see what's going on and oh man it's 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 devastating it hurts my heart just to see all that's that's taking place but i just i just said to them i just said you know i just want you to know that it's not that i don't care yeah i said um even i i did do one one post um mm. on the story and i said my my heart uh aches uh, or words don't have i i don't have words to say how my heart hurts or whatever. Just Mm -hmm. basically, I I don't know what to say. Yeah. Instead of just saying something just because it's the thing to do, I'd rather just Mm -hmm. wait. And so I just told them and, and, um, and they, they appreciated that. And, uh, they're looking to you as guidance as dad. And, and for those listening, yeah, (laughs) well, that's what I'm saying. You pastor a, a big church, a denominational part of the C3 and you're still out in Coachella, right? Coachella Valley. So yeah. Coachella, right by Palm Springs. I know when I go out there with my wife and the kids sometimes, normally Pastor Eddie's out there doing his frontside rocks and his blunts, and it's always <laughs> cool to see you. I know we planned on doing this for some time, but but what you're saying is right. Even the gentleman I'll have on next who's in his 60s, a black pastor in Long Beach, and, he, and just today, man, how you doing? We go for later. Brian, I'm drained. I'm devastated. I know God is good, but it's pulling people. 
And I think it is wisdom what you're just saying. Just English people out with process. But right now, um, is it politics? Is it racism? Is it anger? Is it hate? If we, like you said earlier, if we even say the wrong thing, people are so fired up. I mean, just driving down the road right now, it's so sensitive. Um, I, I went by the pet store to get my kid's pet lizard that I guess I've taken over on. And next door to it is a gun store. And hearing the people going in, which was crazy, it takes two hours now to get in there. And I just seen a statistic that two million Americans, last weekend, two million Americans went out and bought guns for the first time. So if you're talking about an eye for an eye in the Old Testament, the chaos, I think it's wisdom, brother, to say to your kids, guys, I got you. I love you. I'm your dad, your pastor, your employer. And hopefully that does filter in the church where like the corona we just ride this house and um, yeah, that's, that's heavy. <laughs> yeah. But they, you know what, they, they appreciate it actually first, you know, because they, um, you know, it's just, and everybody's doing what they feel. They're yeah. Doing. And, and you know, what's kind of neat. And I kind of see that, you know, they, they went out or, or went out and, and did a march here. In, yeah. In yeah. And, and they did it the right way. And I think it's, it's, if we educate, I think that's the most important thing right now that we educate the coming generation, um, how to do it, what to do, how to yeah. handle and say the right things, do the right things. But you know what? In all reality, this is this is not a, a black race, a white race. It, this is a, yeah. a human race, and it's a it's a demonic, spiritual yeah. attack that's coming on. And it's, yeah, and, and it's uh, people need to realize it. Hey, I, I want to read it. I, yeah. I've, been, I've been in a series. Man, take over. You know, you're yeah. Pastor we're gonna, Eddie. We're going to talk about some skating here in a second. Go wherever you want. Right now. Help me out with the Foolishness Podcast. I'm always the one dictating. <laughs> I'm sorry about it. Yeah, 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 do it. No, but you know what? Um, actually, it's, it's so uh, fascinating. Uh, three weeks ago, I think maybe three or four weeks ago, I started a series. Yeah. And it was more because of the COVID and the coronavirus, mm-hmm. people being... Um, being in quarantine, uh, depression. I mean, not only do we have to deal with all that and now with what's, what's going on. So yeah. I started this series of, uh, and I went into the book of Habakkuk, you know, in the book of Habakkuk, there's only three chapters Yeah, and I'm looking at this and it's so prophetic. Um, especially cause I even brought it up on this last Sunday morning, but Habakkuk in the first, in the first chapter, first couple of verses, yeah. He's just like burdened. He's this prophet, so he's burdened about what's going on, and um, and so he begins these these words. He's talking to God, and he <laughs> says, "How long, Lord, must I call for help?" Isn't that just like God? I've been calling for help. COVID, you know. And he's a prophet, so he yeah. already has God on his side. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, man, could you imagine if he's a prophet of God? Everyone else, how they were feeling. Yeah. And he says, "But, uh, but you do not listen." It's like, okay, God, I'm calling. You're not listening. And I feel that that's kind of like, you know, like I said, during this time of, of COVID isolation, all this as pastors, yeah. we have to really like instill faith. There's hope, yeah. you know, you know, you're going to make This is the clear. time to have faith. Yeah. Exactly. And so then he comes along, he says, uh, or cry out to you violence. I mean, violence is all around, but you do not say. It's like he's saying, God, come on. You know, I'm calling yeah. out, I'm not listening. You're not saving. There's violence all around. He says, uh, why do you make me look at injustice? Wow. Isn't that, isn't that what that's, we're doing that's right That's like a, a column right now that could be anywhere. You could just read that and say, this is for today. Exactly. Yeah. And then it comes along and says, wow. uh, why? Oh, I love this one. Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? It's like, it's like, you know how people that don't know God are like, oh, yeah, if your God is so real, why, why yeah. is he allowing this? Why is that he happened. tolerating this wrongdoing? Why is he tolerating murder? Now the preaching's it? coming out of you. I like I'm it. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. So there, goes, so there it goes. Destruction and violence are before me. Wow. I mean, the last couple of days, we've seen just violence crazy. and destruction. And then there's strife. There's conflicts abound. Therefore, the law is paralyzed. And it seems like uh, when I'm reading, I mean, I'm reading this and I, and it's kind of helping me a few weeks ago, but now it's like <laughs> even more like, wow. And justice wow. prevails. Yeah. Wow. It's like, are, are people saying this? Where's justice? They, well, they want the answer. What's this COVID thing? What's the government doing? What's going on? I mean, and even right now, I mean, 
in whatever city you're in, I mean, people are taking this into their own hands. I brought up those gun statistics because people are like, I'm actually afraid. And like you said, I want people to hear this so they understand there's peaceful protest, which is the right thing to do. To protest, even if people miss the exact reason why, I've heard people say, well, this is all an agenda. Well, maybe it is, but I have enough black friends, Asian friends, Mexican yeah. friends. I mean, am I even white anyway? I mean, I know we're called that, yeah. but I'm saying that they just see we care. And I, I hate even that word we, like we're so different. Like, no, as you said, we're all the human race, yeah, yeah. but let's redeem this time. But yet, as you're reading that, <laughs> I mean, that is the situation. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's crazy. Then, the, then the last thing is in the wicked helmet, in the righteous and so justice is perverted. So, I mean, people are looking to say, you know what? This justice system is perverted. But what I, what I love, so I started off with this, you know, like I said a few weeks ago. Yeah. Three chapters at the end of, of chapter three. Yeah. He has a, a shift. He's at one place. He's starting off with anxiety, the situation. And then all of a sudden he comes around and his, his mindset changes. And he he. The same thing's happening because at the, at the <laughs> end, in chapter 3, verse 17 through 19, it says there's no blossom, there's no fruit, there's no olive on the, on the vine, no food, no flocks, um, and, and no herds in the stalls. In other words, it's still, it's still a bad time. Yeah. But he had a mind shift of realizing he comes, I will rejoice in the Lord. Mm -hmm. He says, I will have joy <laughs> in the God of my salvation. And it's just one of those things that's like, mm -hmm. if... If you don't know the Lord, it's it's going to be hard for you to. Where find is your hope? What are you waiting on? What are you? Because even his prayer, you will not listen. I would say, well, the problem is you're wanting God to respond to your prayer, and we pray. I know we're men of faith. Yeah. We believe, and I mean, we're the believers that believe the gifts and the signs are still for today. Yeah. I believe oh, yeah. God, you do that. I believe it's nullified a lot because it's more for what we want to do. But He's probably asking God to do what He wants, and God's like. I'm going to answer you. And you know, the famous saying, there's a yes, there's a no, and there's maybe later or not yeah. now. And um, so God is faithful for us yeah. right now. And, and I heard a guy say the other day, you know, the only time I, when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is to look out the window to see where we are in the book of revelation. And yeah. I was like, there, there's, without going down that road right now, yeah. Yeah. there's never a truer time. And, and one of the things I love having guests on every guest been a believer. It is a, a Christian centered podcast in that sense is that we are able to rejoice granted our houses aren't burned and the churches and all the rest, but those would be hard days, but we can rejoice like no one else because of the hope of Jesus. Yeah. That man, he, three chapters, he's sitting. Okay, Lord, I'm looking to you. That's, that's the message. It's faith. Yeah. yeah. So, and I love because, um, it, well, God does answer in mm -hmm. verse number five of the first chapter. He says, yeah. I will work a work in your days, which you would not believe, though it were told you. But up in chapter six, still didn't happen. But God says, I'm going to do a work. And God says, I'm going to do it my way. And, yeah. and that's, you know, a lot of times I have to say, you know, you know, a, a death in the family, you know, a death within the church, you know, yeah. just something devastating. And I just have to, to say, God, you have the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what's going on and, and as much yeah. as and and i hate to especially like during this time is to say all things work for good to those who love the lord and called according to his purpose yeah I mean, to say that it's like well you know but god will take what evil has done and god will turn it around for good and it's tough to say sometimes people that people that don't understand it doesn't god, feel good it's, no, it's not a yeah. not at all so anyway, so wow. <laughs> it's, it, it is, it's just, just crazy times, but I just, uh, mm -hmm. I know the hope that we have in, in Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, kind of, you were saying something about skating. I just, that's what I love about skateboarding. Yeah. Man, we're all brothers. I mean, yeah. it doesn't oh, matter. The, the I mean, bigger picture, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like we, <laughs> we skate and we, we love each other because yeah. we, that's what we have in common and, mm -hmm. and we don't look at color we look at race and, and and we see and that's you know I, I may have gotten in trouble by there by saying we don't see color but because it, it I know well that's not politically it, correct yeah. and you're saying that to because well what's even your ethnicity Eddie Elgera that's yeah, what I thought and so yeah. 
And so I'm my brown. wife, you know, yeah. you're brown. And so my wife, you know, Italian, Native American, yeah, yeah. Um, Hispanic, you know, whether you say Latino. I mean, when I first came here, I didn't even know all these things. So I was like, oh, he speaks Mexican. And they're like, no, it's Spanish. <laughs> so, I, but the thing about skating is, and even when I get in the next episode later, I'm raising a culture in Liverpool. It's very eclectic, very different groups of people, Pakistanis, blacks, whites, everything. There wasn't a lot of Mexicans there, but you just grow up seeing the Fresh Prince. You see Rocky and Apollo. Yeah. You see Mr. T. I mean, Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah. We could go on. So to me, it was so far. And then to get to America and see, wait a minute, there really was this thing centuries ago. How sad. And then they realized it was even in England until William Wilberforce came along and a white guy fought to set the, those who were oppressed free, even with Jackie Robinson. Yeah. I mean, it was a white, I'm not saying white, 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 but I'm saying there's a, there's a way to paint people with this broad brush that can almost demonize people that you and I, as much as I've heard people say stupid things or whatever, it makes my skin, you know, crawl. Yeah. I've probably heard people say racist things three or four times in my life. And I don't even think they were serious. And it made me so mad on the spot right then because yeah. it's skating. You get that skateboard, you go into the shop or the skate park, and you're just skaters. Yeah. I mean, it's the same way Bruce was, Lee, with martial arts. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we know with Jesus because we're all made in his image, Genesis 1, 26, 27. Yeah. But I would like to get some of these politicians to go, and some of these cops maybe, if they supposedly are hating in, in, because of race, go down to the skate park and see all the – my kids go to the skate park in Westminster – a lot of Mexican kids, a lot of white kids, few black kids. We go to the other parts of LA, a lot of black kids, a lot of Mexican kids, few white kids. Yeah. We don't see color. You just, yeah. you get on with it and, and you love each other, you know? So that's the current update and yeah. <laughs> but I think, but I think, like you said, but I think the, the, the politically correct or whatever, they're, they're, it's color yeah. God. I mean, it's beautiful. God. Yeah created the rainbow god created yeah. animals with different colors and yeah there is colors but i think the thing is is sometimes i don't know i just like i said i i i, <laughs> I know it's well you know if you go in and i've looked at this a lot you know i love the old chuck misslers and then even the later hebrew scholars but they say even the word adam the word in the hebrew implies red and they don't know whether that means he has red hair and he was a white guy with red hair which i heard someone say which i'm like i don't believe that but if he was the color of dirt, is there a red? Is that what color he was? And I've heard a lot of people say, no, he was middle brown, which I'd never heard that term until recently while looking at this. But here's the reality. Adam and Eve were the first. So whoever came from them, you know, Cain and Abel, then you have all the way through to Noah, the earth's flooded. You have um, Noah's three sons who obviously had their wives. If you have two black people, two white people, you're not going to have an Asian baby. So what that tells you is that somehow God within those three sons through Noah, through Adam's lineage, you have Asian, you have black, you have yeah. white, you have all this stuff. What we're seeing today, sadly, is the same issue with Cain and Abel, brothers yeah. fighting, and the enemy's done a great job of dividing. And even what you said, it's demonic. We don't mean beings with them spikes on their head running around with pitchforks just screaming we mean an agenda in this world that's also sadly a partially in man, in man. there's yeah. conflict there as well so we got to pray into that belief so that's yeah. current but but for you then i mean well how old are you now you're i'm gonna be 58 this what year. Yeah. no way yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys are watching on youtube give it up for good good aging right there for pastor eddie yeah. so so I know we've known each other a good, what, maybe two decades now. You're definitely a generation before I got here. So I know for the skaters who tune in as well, and hopefully a lot of the other listeners just to hear the amazing work God has done. Where did this begin? Were you raised in a Christian home? Did skating come first? I mean, help us with that. Yeah, no, no skating came first um, back. And I was thinking about this the other day because I pulled out my very first skateboard. And, wow. And, um, I, my, I was 1970 when I got my very first skateboard. Uh, I was eight years old and it was a Wood Hobie clay wheels. But yeah. it wasn't something like, oh man, I'm going to be, this is what. Yeah, this is the next thing. You just got it. It was like, like you said, a toy. It was like yeah. one of those things. It was a novelty at the time. 
Remember when they, they thought it was going to go out like the hula hoop or whatever? Yeah, I, I was born in 79, so maybe I don't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear people, people talking, talking, about talking about it. People talking about it. I remember it. people talking about I, it, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm not that old either. but <laughs> No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, so anyway, so I got the skateboard. I, yeah. But I lived up in Lake Arrowhead. Okay. So I was in the mountains. And back then, it was more surf style. Yeah. Because, you know, you've heard the story about the waves and that they kind of around the Yeah. Uh, and Lake Arrowhead, I wasn't a surfer, so, but I just rode down the hills, you know, along yeah. my butt, whatever. Just, yeah. just having fun. I didn't know that. Wow, Lake Arrowhead. Yeah. yeah. And so I was far from the skate scene. Back mm. then, there was no uh, skateboarder magazine out yet. Um, you would see uh, ads in the surfer magazine. Yeah. I remember when Cadillac Wheels came out, Greg Weaver on Cadillac Kid, the Eurothane Wheels came out. So that's kind of when things began <laughs> to change. And then in 1975, summer of 1975, so this is five years later, I walked yeah. into a liquor store, magazine rack, and I see this magazine of uh, Greg <laughs> Weaver in a pool, halfway up, barefoot, and he has the same board as that I have. It's a Wood Hobie. What? Oh, man, I saw that, and it just, it was so cool because... <laughs> I never seen that before. Yeah. And you know, halfway up the pool, but it didn't matter. It was just like yeah. that looked cool. And I thought to myself, man, yeah. and you're twelve now, to... right? You were like you're saying yeah, it's five years. 12. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I was like, man, one day one day I want to do that. I just <laughs> but, and then I so I'd buy the magazines, I'd look through the magazines, front yeah. I mean, just like anybody. Once they once they get into skating, front to yeah. back, read the articles, look at the pictures, hang over and the over. Wall, over and over. You it's 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 a Bible. It's like the Bible. Yeah, to you. I say that it's religion. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so, so I, every every month I'd wait for the new mm. uh, issue to come out. But uh, it's funny because I started getting pretty good and doing better. And it's one of those things that I just said, man, I want to do this one day. I thought, yeah. in it, in a million years, I never thought I would be in the magazines, even though it was a desire of my heart. Yeah. Uh, Four years later, I'm on the cover, Skateboarder Magazine. Wow. Uh, on a front side invert, a trick that I invented. Four and years that, later? Four years. And it's like from just seeing it and thinking, wow. Well, help man. us understand that. How did the prog- – so you see this cover because – when I hear your name, I mean, I just even watched the footage of Hocus Pocus of you in that hatred video then. So there's been these profound contests and a crazy time in history. But I think of you and almost the, the, the name, the claim that I would say the most is whenever Tony Hawk references who he looked up to, it's you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So as much as that's America, he's like, man, Eddie and Eddie and Eddie. So when you got that magazine and you're seeing, wait, this guy's doing that trick on that thing I have in the garage, it's basically a hula hoop. Who else, who was the influence that took you from there to getting on the cover? Like, who were you watching? Jay Adams wasn't around yet, right? And was Christian down the hill or were they still going? No, Jay, Jay Adams. Um, so you've got the magazine. Uh, yeah. Since it was from San Diego, Greg okay. Weaver, he, was yeah. on the cover. he was a Cadillac kid. That's when the wheels came out. And then remember the Dogtown Z-Boy movie. Yeah. The Year Thing Wheels. And that's like. That was already happening right then, huh? It was right around that time. So, okay. So then in the magazines, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, San Diego's down south. Steve Cathy, Dennis Martinez. Um, Dennis. I mean, a lot of these older, older guys. But they were in the magazines doing freestyle, you know, handstands. and Yeah. And uh, nose wheelies and the Logans, yeah, you know, all that was like in the magazine. But yet, the the Z Boys were also in there. So there was now the pool influence coming in the very first issue. Obviously, it was on the cover, but they were in there. And actually, every episode uh, issue, they would have it was tales of the, I don't know, I forgot what Dogtown or something yeah. or whatever. So they had an article about Dogtown, all the guys from there, and they're the ones that had the full on surf style. Yeah, so, yeah. So p- even people like like. Greg Weaver that was on the cover, but T.A., mm. Jay Adams, all the Dogtown guys. I, I mean, you would, I had all, all these different types of heroes. Because they were the I, punk I, rock guys, and they were the ones, they look up to Larry Bertelman, and they were all doing it through Venice. And it's just, that was a time in culture when it was about music, photography. I mean, it was a thriving industry. Yeah. Venice is a shadow of what it was then, but there was just so much. I mean, it's amazing for skating with the park and that. But so you're seeing that. How do you make it down the mountain? Was there a skate somewhere to skate in Lake Forest? Or would you, I mean, from Lake Arrowhead, or would you come down the mountain to these schoolyards now and connect with the 
TAs and the Jay Adamses and all the rest are. Yeah, well, well, obviously, like nowadays, you see the video, so, so you see what they they do. So yeah. I'm getting these magazines, and I see like a noseweed, and I'm thinking, okay, how how does how do they do that? Are they just standing still? But then they're going, and you look at all these pictures. So I'm trying to to emulate and do these tricks. Yeah. Without even knowing how they went, you know, I wanted to go. In the I love hearing pool. this because did they have sequence cameras yet? Because that was my generation. You get like a trick tips page that was a two page spread. And it would be like in Rad Magazine or something. It would be like a nose slide to Crooked Grind and nose slide Gazelle. And oh, you'd yeah. be like trying to figure out what he did. So was, it, was there sequences at the time or no? They, they started having it, but still even then it was like, uh, <laughs> I don't even know. And then we, uh, we didn't have no video cameras or I didn't even really have cameras. Yeah, so of course. So we have all these, this, all this, uh, yeah. watching all this, but then like, uh, so I'd practice and practice and practice, not knowing. And then when I wanted to skate a pool, because there's no pools up in Lake Area, because there's yeah. a lake there and some mountains. And yeah. so um, I would hitchhike down with a friend down to San Bernardino mm -hmm. and look for empty swimming pools. And we would skate some of the empty swimming pools <laughs> and then hitchhike back home. I'm probably now uh, 14, 15 now, maybe. Yeah. Time. And uh, wow. just trying to get good, trying to get, get uh, better and then not knowing – how am I going to get recognized? Yeah. Um, I had some older brothers. They took me, uh, they took me to Baldy pipe. Oh, okay. This is probably like 76. Yeah. They took me out to like Baldy pipe and it was like, have you ever been there? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. It, it was super smooth at that time. Back yeah. now it's so rough and yep. it's so hard to, you know, super soft wheels. They took me out to the Arizona pipes. Uh, mm. legendary fruit bowl there's a yeah bowl. and i was like a little grom a little kid they took me when um the first skate park carlsbad opened up and so they would because they were this in were they this into skating and you were just a little brother or was it like oh we'll just go do something well well actually because we moved up to lake arrowhead when i was in 1970 yeah before we lived in in north long beach paramount area so they would go to the beach a lot okay so when to the mountains they kind of love to surf but I never got into surfing because I was too young. So they still had that surf stuff, but I, yeah. I didn't have that. So they kind of got into skating, but they just, they loved yeah. that. And they were actually, my, my second oldest brother was, was better than me. Okay. So we would go to all these places, but so we would go to all these, these places. <laughs> and, but the thing that kind of made it the biggest impact yeah. and kind of launched me into my career, uh, Colton Skate Park was opening up. In 1978, the uh, the, um, the October 1978, yeah, the OB team was going to be there. Skitch Hitchcock. I mean, all if, if you're older, you know these names. Some of these people. Yeah. I don't know. Who I'm thinking 42 guys. years ago. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know it is. It's like I, when I think about it, it's like wow. Yeah, it seems like yesterday. And so, um, uh, Dale Smith, he was he was there. Um, he's a freestyler. Um, Dwayne Peters. So okay. this is when I met Dwayne Peters. So yeah. the whole team came out and I'm thinking, this is my opportunity. I want to get sponsored. I had a <laughs> shop sponsor from San Bernardino. It's, it was a sports store that would get yeah. stuff. But man, I said, man, and like any skater, man, I want to get sponsored. I want to yeah. get free stuff. And that was for me that, at first, that's all I wanted to do. Get sponsored. Same for me. I just wanted stickers and yeah. you know, I put them on the TV remotes on my mom's fridge, just peeling it off. Like this is something I represent. Yeah. yeah. Well, I even used to, before that, I used to cut, cut out of the magazines and then <laughs> tape them on my board like it was a sticker. Yeah. I, I couldn't get these stickers anywhere. I'm thinking. Yeah. And so anyway, so uh, Hobie wow. team was going to be there. I said, this is my opportunity to show off my stuff. And so, you know, throughout the day, they're doing demos and I'm skating the, the 12 foot bowl and then the, the yeah. half pipe and stuff. And then, and then Dwayne was there and he was doing some extended inverts on the extension of the yeah. pipe and and so they came up to me that day and uh, uh Dwayne brought me these uh, uh hobie wheels hobie claw wheels and said hey wow they, they invited me to be on the team so that was so they noticed already i mean so you were you at a place where your brothers were like eddie you're doing really well or did you notice you were landing these tricks or yeah, I mean, I knew that. Yeah, like when I would go to different areas. Yeah. I was pretty much kind of like one of the better ones. Yeah, yeah. And so we would go to a backyard pool, and it wasn't like where people famous were, but yeah. Like, oh man, this, this little kid's doing all these tricks and stuff. So yeah, yeah. I kind of knew that I was kind of pretty good. Yeah. But I, didn't, I, I didn't. I the the industry I still didn't get the recognition yet. 
Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> so that day, that's... so that day, I got saved, and that was October, October nineteen seventy nine. Yeah. And so you mean got sponsored, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said yeah. you got saved, yeah, into oh, the no, skate yeah, industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, no, got sponsored. You didn't get saved through through Dane, through through, uh, <laughs> through Dwayne. You got sponsored, yeah. So, but anyway, that's why uh, me and Dwayne we became uh, yeah friends because of that. And it, it's uh, I mean we have stories after stories, but so um, I got on yeah. the team. Uh, they said, you know what, we want to start, uh, you need to start entering some contests. I said, all right. I hadn't entered any bowl contest yeah. at that time. I entered a couple little amateur contests in San Bernardino or whatever. And did good, mm -hmm. won those. But then in 1979, and this is kind of when I look at kind of my career, how, how quick it, it began. So in, yeah. in February 1979 was my first uh, uh, bowl contest. It was at Big O Skate Park. I got second place there. Then the next month, I think it was Skatopia. A couple of, so, and then in April was the national amateur champion final. Yeah. I won first place in bowl. So from February to then, I became the national amateur champion. But then, wow! I entered the next month, or later in that month, I entered. It was called the Dog Bowl Pro. Yep. And as an amateur, because I won amateur, so they said go enter it as an amateur to see how it is. And this is. Uh, Tony Alba was in it. Hackett was in there. Uh, Dave Andrick and you know just all the guys. Yeah, they were the uh, thriving Olsen, guys who Olsen, were. And uh, all these guys were in that contest. I think there was like eighty guys, and so it was kind of my first kind of bout <laughs> about entering in and dating with these guys, and it was kind of cool because I had done at that time I was still amateur. Yeah. But I did a frontside in, but nobody was doing them yet. And so I was the first. Wow. They're like looking at this, and, and I did a frontside inver. My hand was like on the tile, but yeah. still, I. It, it, it Where did you get happen. a frontside inver from? Was someone else doing it, or did you just start doing them? Or well, a, a lot of people. I mean, Jay Adams would throw them up. Yeah. Uh, people would throw them up, but they would always slide out. Yeah. To the drain. Yeah, yeah. That's right. They would come would down and slide around and stand up and walk out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's how they were. So I just kind of figured how to to make it so you kind of just throw it underneath and yeah and proper yeah so i was doing that so it was man so that was fun but then i turned pro in in uh, june yeah yeah so it's kind of like tom curran like he went up to kind of like the uh, surf ranks then got pushed into the pro ranks and who would win those contests like the one you first entered that was your second who was winning was it those kind of guys or uh, I don't even remember now, yeah. <laughs> the, and the pro or the AMs? Like the pro ones, who was then winning oh. the pro? It was just Jay, I mean, Tony and Jay and those guys. Well, and Actually, that's kind of, actually, it was kind of funny because I think a lot of those guys at the Dog Bowl Pro, that's kind of when it kind of, there became a shift in mm. bowl contests. Yeah. And the Hester Series was the very first bowl series. It was 1978. Um, and that was, uh, uh, Salba won the very first, very first bowl. I was just going to bring him up because you mentioned uh, Baldy because he's always skating that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So he won the very first bowl contest. It was part of the Hester Series. The first one, Spring Valley. Uh, Olsen won the overall for the first year of the Hester Series. Wow. Uh, people like Blackheart. And um, I'm just trying to think. It's just the yeah. Games. These guys are still Martin going, Hester, though. Pineapple yeah. and Dave Andrick and those. And hmm. so they were all part of that first series. So at the dog bowl pro at that time it was kind of like there was a change into the guards because now there was a lot of amateurs that were coming up like myself yeah uh, eric gresham he invented like the foot plant wow and, and a few other amateurs were coming up and so it was kind of the change into the guards but so then the hester series number two started yeah and i had missed the very first one it was in winchester because i was still amateur but then I went to the, my second one in Boulder, Colorado. And at that contest, um, I brought out the El Gario. So it was the first time anybody was doing like a 360 <laughs> hand plant. Yeah. And I brought out the El Gario and just doing like really good inverts, everything else. It's, Did you do frontside rock shed or no? Uh, yeah, actually, I was a, in two contests later. I'll, wow. Yeah, get to it. Yeah. yeah, take yeah, okay. it. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just excited because my son learned them. I'm like, well, I've got oh, to get that. the pointers, but you're bringing. See, here's the thing because street skaters, we get thrown Rodney Mullen because Rodney mastered all the streets. But so you would be working on stuff. You got this frontside invert and then the trick you're. 
So then what? You're winning these next few contests. Was there only really a contest scene? And were the Z-Boys more like resistance of it at that time? Or I was think, it? And see, this is kind of where it kind of like changed and it shifted. Because yeah. at the first series, it was mostly grinds, carves, um, rolling in. Mm. It began to do frontside airs, uh, little backside airs, rock and yeah. rolls. But then it was kind of like pretty much, it was kind of more of grinding and carving. So when I came around, yeah, um, I had a coach, Dale Smith. He helped me with the Elgario. He says, you know what? Before you enter your first pro contest, he says, you know what? You're good. You can place top 10. You're going to be a good mm. pro where you're at, just with the tricks that you have, the inverts, the rock and rolls, board slides, things like that. Mm. He says, but you need to stand out. He says, I want to teach you this trick. And I was like, he says, this is what we're going to do. And he says, I want you, <laughs> want you to meet me at the skate park. And he says, you're going to fake you. Because back then, fake you would, you would slide into a fake you, but there was nothing to come out of it. Yeah. So you kind of do something, and then you would roll up, and then just go back. Or do a tail stall. And go yeah. Back. So there was no tricks. And he says, this is what you're going to do. You're going to slide to fakey. And, and fakies were new. Yeah. New. So, and then you're going to go, and you're going to flip around. And, and put your hand and flip around and come back straight. <laughs> and I'm all, no. I said, no, that's, there's no way. He goes, no, 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 you can do it, you can do it. And he's saying, you can do it. You can. And so, uh, you know, I tried it. It went halfway up and landed on my back. And this is like in a 12-foot bowl. So I'm at Had he tried it or had he just seen no, it in no, his head? He, he was a freestyler. That's what I'm so, saying. Like, so this guy's like, okay, here's what I think you should do. Yeah, yeah. And, and so he was a freestyler wow. and he saw and he began to visualize these things. That's cool. What's kind of, what's kind of funny though, is I kind of look at it because back then and he's and people were like, ah, oh, Eddie has a coach, uh, a coach. And you know, it's kind of one of those things. It's like, no, escape, you do your own thing, but yeah, he was able to visualize and kind of walk it through. So he said, no, no, you have to turn your head and you need to go up. And, mm -hmm. and within two hours, I, I, Came up with the Elgario. Wow. Yeah. That's, and so that's what you unleashed. Yeah. Because I remember, yeah. was, I, was, I was with a soy and Caballero, maybe even Lance. You know, when this is when we'd just travel, do some ministry stuff. And they were just talking about Mike McGill. And I just talked to Mike the other day. I'm listing all these people that I grew up looking up to and hearing about. But they were talking about when he unveiled the McTwist. Yeah. And like, well, it's like this, like this. And they said, then when they seen it in person, and it's actually upside down, it was yeah. like, what do we do? And obviously now kids, you know, are like gymnasts. But so you bring this trick to the to the contest, uh, and the front side rocks. Was that a, so that's around the same time? I mean, yeah. So I came that. So I unveiled that at the at the um, the first contest that I entered. The next, I I, I was in first place all the way up. I, wow. I front side inverse. Actually, kind of the front side inverse was really that. That's where I got the cover for, was for my first pro contest. Front side invert, the Elgaria, kind of like I was in first place leading up. Then, you know, I just choked. I was new. It was yeah. like all these pros. And so I got third place. But then the next contest at, at um, in, um, in uh, Del Mar, I got first. I didn't have a new trick there. But then Whittier contest was coming up. And me and Dale, we, we started, okay, came to the park. He goes, you know what? People do rock and rolls this way. But they don't do front side because it's, you know, it's, it's you can't see it doesn't like, make sense it's crazy and, and in a big bowl like a 12 foot bowl it's like you you don't see so he says we're gonna go he met me at the skate park he goes let's try it on this little <laughs> this little bank little bank and seriously within a couple hours i'm all doing it in the 12 foot bowl That's and he was crazy. just like this is what you need to do it's like you put your you know because i use and i have a shirt that says the trick is in the back toe because you have to have your back toe and yeah. it kind of like pivots the way that i do it it's kind of when you pivot so it's perpendicular out and then it, it, the board kind of pivots along the back toe. So you pull it way off as far as you can and then go completely 180 in, or do you even slide it down the wall sometimes? Um, just depends. Sometimes, yeah, it just depends on what the bowl is. You try to just kind of win eight, but it's kind of like you, you go like this. Yeah. And you're kind of like, <laughs> you're going up and you go like this, and then the board pivots on the bowl. On the, on your Those toe. not watching... Uh, Pastor Eddie is doing it with his iPhone on the side of his TV desk right now. I just say it because of all the photos I have, which I have them all in a book. Let me show you, let me show you something yeah. like it. Hold on a second. Is it okay Bring it over. I get out of my seat? Oh, go ahead. I mean, I yeah. I think I know what you're going to grab. That's in the background. Let's see yeah, it. Yeah, where is it? Oh, it's all right here. Yeah. Some, some guy made me a... Uh... He's going to grab him a skate ramp. Let's see this. Oh, wow. <laughs> Hope oh, anyway. you guys listening. Yeah. 
so anyway, this is kind of like, see the, the toe? This is from, actually, this was from, a guy made this for me, but this was uh, from, it, actually from a picture that is in Whittier. So it kind of like, wow. the trick is in the back toe. So anyway, so that's when the front rock came about. Yeah. Was, um, was back, uh, back. So then, so then I started, we started coming along and saying, you know what? We were always trying to stay ahead with new tricks at every yeah. Time. And so, um, for That's me, cool. I like, came up with the front side rock. And then I think, uh, uh, the next contest or the contest after I did fakie ollies. Yeah. And then I did board, a uh, rock fakie and board side fakies. And see a lot of these tricks. It's like, Oh yeah. It's, it's taken for granted. No, but what you're saying is crazy because I looked at guys like Jeff Rowley, Heath Care Chart, who frontside boards sit down big rails. And so what you're saying is literally that day you had to decide not to look under the arm, but to look over. And that's where when I, my son, I'm telling the front board handrails right now, little rails. And I'm like, but if you look down, you slam and hit your face. You have to literally pose the trick. And I know growing up, all my friends from Liverpool, they loved Antihero, you know, and Julian Stranger and everyone's getting Burnside. Those famous photos doing front rocks on the punk wall. Oh. The most you could get your foot off the tail, like you said, they were the photos you've seen on the wall. So I'm just saying this for the skating edge. You know, a lot of people are tuning in. It's relevant. So you're bringing all these tricks in and – how was the industry doing? What, where was skating as far as financially? Could you make a living now off all this or, or what? Uh, no, not then. I mean, yeah. You know. Ape around in the morning, skating yeah. in the night. <laughs> I was 17 years old. I was just stoked that I was, you know, got to travel around and get a little, some money and yeah. do all that. And so, and that's kind of when it shifted a lot because I started doing all these tricks and a lot of the guys, were, they would call me, oh, Eddie's doing the tricks. It's, he's a robot. I was part of a team called Veriflex. Yeah. And Veriflex had like uh, Eric Gresham, myself, Losi, um, uh, Steve Hirsch, Mike Kirsch. And um, we, were, we were pretty much dominating um, mm. a lot of the contests because we were coming out with tricks. Yeah. And so we were coming out with all these tricks and it kind of shifted – and it's because probably because I was not a surf style, so I was kind of just more of the tricks. And that's where Tony kind of came in. I was going to say that. He was titled even called a robot as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's, he even says, he said in interviews, he said that, he goes, I, I didn't have the style. And I wanted, and I didn't want the style. I wanted to do tricks. Yeah, and he I owned it. Eddie, and Eddie was the one that was leading in doing tricks. Wow. So I did like that, frontside rocks, uh, um, <laughs> Board slide fakies, rock fakies first, fakie yeah. ollies, uh, fast plant fakies. I did a uh, Andrick to fake. So I kind of did a lot of tricks that kind of went to fakie. Actually, mm. Grasso in one of the episodes of uh, Love Letters, it's on yeah. fakie. It kind of at the beginning it talks about that, and then it goes into a lot of. Yeah, I want to go check that out. Yeah. Yeah. Jeff Grosso with the Love Letters on YouTube, yeah. and are you in it as well, or he just talks about what an Andrick yeah, yeah. is? Yeah. No, no, no. It, the first uh, and the issue of uh, it's called Fakey, talking about fakies. Okay. What are the origins of fakey? So yeah. actually, I'm the first part of that, kind of on how to go to fakies, and then it goes talks, uh, to street, starts talking about uh, switch. So you know. Yeah. Before it was called switch. It was called fakey. <laughs> uh, well, I remember because when I was coming in, it was like, is it switch? Is it fakey? And just so people even even get this idea, it's funny because surfing is totally just smash the lip, hit the lip, do a couple of grinds. Then skaters come in. So people like yourself and Tony are developing tricks. Obviously, Tony, you know, we're talking to Tony Hawk here, guys, is whole other bag of just, he said he was a lean guy, tall guy, didn't have the style points, which is rip. People kind of look down on it. But what's funny is the last 10 years, you know, with the John John Florences and the Jamie O'Brien's Julian Wilson, I remember hanging out with Benji Weatherly. He used to ride for Analog with me, you know, and he's obviously best friends with Kelly Slater, all those guys. And I was like, man, why don't surfers grab the same way skaters do? Because a lot of time it was like a frontside air, but it was kind of stinky. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. now they're grabbing a tuck in. Yeah. I seen even Curran Capels entered a surf contest at a backside like Crossbone. One of the best. So now they're really grabbing them and they're doing it. And maybe your coach went and sat with them and said, guys, you're doing it wrong. Let me help you. Cause yeah. yeah. So that's going on. And then how does the faith journey come in then? Does, um, so were you that, raised in the faith or no? 
No, well, you know, I was Catholic and, yeah. you know, kind of, I did my first Holy Communion, but I was the younger of five, so I didn't have to do my confirmation. And if people, were yeah. Catholic, they know there's, that's the second level. Yeah. But, I did, I, but by the time I did my first Holy Communion after that, it was like, uh, we don't really go to church anymore. It was religion, just get on with life, yeah. yeah. And so, yeah. and being Hispanic, that's kind of like what you do. Um, mm -hmm. What, uh, so then that year, 1979, won uh, Skater of the Year, Most Spectacular New Maneuver. Wow. You know, just all kinds of stuff. The next year was Gold Cup Series. Uh, oh, I, I won second overall in the series, but I didn't enter the first contest. Mickey Alba won overall. But everybody you know, was saying if I would have entered the first one, I might have won overall uh, that year as well because I missed the first contest. But then the second year, they changed it to the Gold Cup Series. And in the Gold Cup Series, I um, won the series. Kind of just still... Benny Trace kind of going you're forward. building your resume and you're and now you're our kids around the world hearing about you and, and skating and there's more people picking up skateboards right there's more yeah, companies yeah. starting yeah and then being in all the magazines and I was thinking too the other day I think I in all my contests I would never place under under fifth mm -hmm. um, under fifth place so it's pretty much always within that within that you expected to a lot of seconds a lot of first and just so just kind of went there. So then at the end of uh, in 1980, I just kind of like at the place of uh, just like I was thinking, man, is there's, there's uh, there must be more. I just kind of got tired. It's, and, mm -hmm. and it's and it's like everybody that finds the Lord. It's yeah. Just, they're trying to find fulfillment, trying to find, yeah. uh, fulfill that emptiness on the inside. That's what it was. It was skating wasn't doing it anymore. You know, like everybody. They try to find fulfillment in other things. So I, I stopped skateboarding yeah. um, competitively. And I just like, I, I did, I just kind of left. Yeah. I went down to Mexico for a little bit, tried to, I was going to move down there, retire. Uh, my grandfather had a ranch and I was like, oh, maybe I'll do that. But for wow. three years, I started drinking, started doing drugs and, and uh, kind of just lost everything. Just kind of moved back to the mountains, started yeah. working at my brother's fast food restaurant so it's it's like you know, why did that become the norm why did it go from something like productive where you were guys drinking and partying while you were skating and you were kind of like got into it a bit or were you like okay i'm just gonna go do this i, I just yeah i mean I, yeah. Think I did a little bit here and there but it wasn't like i would always go to parties because i just wanted to be the best yeah i didn't want i didn't want drinking and drugs affecting me um i was kind of like the good guy I guess where the yeah, gnarly the guys. They were the ones <laughs> with the parties, but I just, but, but I did get into that partying and drinking and sleeping and all that in those mm. three years, and then I ended up working at my uh, brother's uh, restaurant. Yeah, and uh, this lady. Uh, th this is uh, this is what I love. This is yeah. like it's so it was so cool. <laughs> it's because it's a resort area, a resort town. Mm -hmm. this lady comes and, and you'd probably like this. She lived in Huntington Beach. Okay. And so she was about, she was about in her sixties. She was up there just visiting for the day. Her and her husband starts talking to me, uh, starts asking me like lots of questions about, about just my life. It's, and, but I could tell that she was going somewhere. And I talked to her, but she, skateboarding came up and this and that. She's going, you know what? You're, you're never going to find fulfillment in skateboarding and, and <laughs> the partying and the things that you're doing. She goes, the only way uh, you're going to find fulfillment is through Jesus Christ. The only way you're going to be happy is through Jesus Christ. And she got that just from a conversation. And yeah. this is like, I'm, I'm, and she didn't know you went a believer. She just straight went to like, here's what you need. Yeah. Yeah. She just started talking to me and just, and just, for, 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 you know, when you talk <laughs> to someone, she goes, All right, okay. And what was so cool about that is she, yeah. so she led me to the Lord that day. Uh, my mom got saved. My brother got saved. But uh, two weeks later, she came back up to the, to the mountains. Came to mm -hmm. the she goes, did you find a church? Oh, I didn't know I needed to go to church. No, no, no. She goes, I came up last weekend and I found this church. You need to go to it. I'm going to come up again on Sunday. What? Take you to church. There she was. She didn't know me. She didn't care. Yeah. She, she wasn't getting nothing out of this. Nothing. No, it was, it was nothing. And so, and, and wow. but what I loved about her, her heart and her passion for the Lord. And mm -hmm. what I, what I love is she used to tell me stories that she would preach 
at the pier in yeah. Huntington Beach, and they would throw oranges and tomatoes at her. But she was actually <laughs> oh. just so radical. And this was uh, 1983. Yeah. And, it's just, and she was just like, she was so on fire. And I was just one of those things that she, um, she was just, she, you know, uh, kind of yeah. rewind a little bit. A lot of times yeah. we people the Lord, but we just, okay, now it's your, now you got to find your journey. Yeah, she, go do your she, deal. She like walked me through until I got planted in a church, until I got wow. solid. She, she tried to disciple you to go get this kid planted. He's up on the mountain. Yeah. And that and is then, important. Yeah. Yeah, and then she would come every Thursday from Huntington Beach after the restaurant closed and come and do a Bible study. And so it's like... That's it was crazy. Kind of crazy, yeah. So it was, it was what, like a nine, ten o'clock Bible study and this lady was leading yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So you got mad love for Huntington Beach then, huh? It's uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I remember. So, you know, she she's passed on and mm -hmm. has gone on to be with the Lord, but um, it's just... It's been, it's pretty cool. Do you yeah, have that's some music going on. There's some stuff going on in this. Oh yeah, I was yeah. So anyone listening, there's some music going on in Eddie's house somewhere. Oh. No, but so that all happens, and then how do you pick up a? Well, you know, I want to say something just because it's, I guess it's my podcast, and you're on here. We can do whatever. But you were close with Jay Adams your whole skate career, then, right? I mean, you guys were friends. I'm guessing a contest, seeing him running into him, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, you know what, Jay was so he was so cool. I mean, well, that's what I wanted to say because I only knew him the last like five or six years of his life, but just his journey. Explain just for people listening because it's now a missing, not, not missing piece of history, but my experiences with Jay, and I say this a lot on the podcast on purpose, was he was like this kid that was so hungry for the Bible and the Word of God, and, and, and I'd see him places, and you know, obviously you all went to the same church for a season. But he just had questions and he had a desire. Oh, but just, just for you to even say, this was the kid I met and then this is what happened. And then even his Christian life, you know, just, just for people listening. Yeah. Well, well, when I knew him, I mean, at first knew him, obviously he was, yeah. just, he was a skater, just famous radical, just crazy guy. Yeah. Super head, got the Zabrid tattoo and all that was going on. <laughs> but, um, but he was a still, he was a genuine guy. He would be yeah. like, Eddie, man, just so rad. It's just, he, he would always encourage me mm -hmm. just, and he was one of my heroes being a Z boy. Uh, just like, man, this is Z boy. It's like, wow. It's like, and it was just so <laughs> cool to me. He's like, man, I love your tricks. I love what you do, man. You just like, and he would always pump me up. Yeah. So then later on, um, because I'd already I'd saved and then I can't kind of came back in the industry. That's kind of like later, but I was going to um, say, yeah, but, uh, he would always come up and ask questions. He'd always talk about the Lord. He, he knew what I was doing as a believer. He would, mm -hmm. um, he, even at the, towards the end of his life, I mean, when he, when he passed, yeah, he was, he was in, in Mexico when he passed. Surfing. Yeah. He's, te he's texting from down there. He said, Eddie, when I get back, we got to go do some outreach. We got to, uh, we got to just mm -hmm. start preaching the gospel. He's basically just saying, we need to go on tour and start you know, uh, yeah, ministry, and so yeah. he was really wanting uh, to get into to ministry, just doing whatever he could to tell people about Jesus. Wow, yeah, because I remember, you know, he was. It was like Jay had came out here, Hazlip planted a church, Christian had got out of prison, and so now it's kind of like the God Squad. I think Dwayne would call it one the God Squad, which is funny. And I remember we were doing that uh, TV show, the reality show, The Uprising, and Jay was getting out of prison, Adams. Yeah, yeah. And so they had an episode, you know, where we, they went and met him. He was around, but I just noticed that over the last few years, I would see him everywhere, whether I'd be at Hurley skating, he would be there. And then it was always like you're saying, he was very encouraging, very about his faith. And I just say that because people sometimes think they're going back into habits or there wasn't a change. And I'm saying this, Jay had said many times, I wish I hadn't lived this lifestyle that now this next generation thinks is so relevant. I remember when Z Boys movie came out. How many people shaved their heads? Young kids, kids that were friends with Dakota. And I remember him just saying, Man, I hear so many kids who are excited about the lifestyle I lived. And he goes, Man, I just want them to know the lifestyle I live now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he was still charging surfing. He was still J Boy. You know what I mean? Like he was the guy who comes up and hugs you and grabs hold of you. And he was just like a kid. I just wanted to honor him with that. That yeah. sounds cool. So, I mean, if he was still around, he's in a better place now. Yeah. It'd be great if he came walking through my door now, but he's not. I don't need him to be here. Praise God. He's gone on to be with the Lord. But 
he'd have been out reaching oh, the yeah. next generation and doing oh, what he's yeah. doing. So, yeah. okay. So that's all going on. You are now going to this church. Okay. How do you get back into skating and, and just even jump from there to, to you're a full-time pastor. I mean, I coming from England, we think of pastors as like Friar Tuck. We just know the Catholic church and, you know, a guy with red hair, a bald head and a, a bigger belly, you know, maybe kind of like mine's getting, but no, you're like at the skate park still, you go all over the world. You do a lot of stuff in Brazil. Yeah. I know we were both part of the skaters Bible, yeah, Bible, you know, a big project with pastor Bruno, shout out to him, you know, Parabons, yeah. a lot of that. So yeah. just, just take us into that. Cause I want people just to meet a pastor, yeah. you know, in that sense. Yeah. So, um, so, 1980, so I stopped in 1980, 1983, get saved, yeah. get planted in church, going to church, uh, 1986, I still wasn't skating competitively, I was kind of, I'd go here and there, do a few things, mm-hmm. but, um, so anyway, um, in 1986, I, God begins to start speaking to me, mm-hmm. yeah. can you, can you hear that music a little bit? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'll, I mean, if it gets louder, I'll try and get moving with it, but I can't tell what it is yet. Okay. Okay. Is it your son or someone playing? Yeah, they're, they're, I'm going to tell them. To, is it okay? Do oh, yeah. Do it no, it doesn't, okay. it doesn't matter. Yeah, I think there's worse things going on outside the walls than in the next room. <laughs> okay. So anyway, yeah, I think it's crazy. So, so yeah. anyway, um, 80, 1986, I yeah. got begins to speak to me about going back in the industry start skating again and at first it's like man i don't want to do it uh one of the reasons like i'm not going to be the best anymore um up the so track. there was a competitive part of that huh there was a part of you that was is a competitor oh yeah oh yeah i mean yeah because yeah, you I, seem I, so relaxed i can't imagine you being like that guy over there i'm going to take him out no, and no, then no. coach is like eddie now and you're like front side invert <laughs> okay no i i think it, yeah, i mean I was always, even now, I was just like, you know, I think I compete against myself, but it's like, yeah, no, gonna, well, that's, that's how you get it. the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm doing this, I'm going, yeah. so, but so that, so then it's like, ah, oh, okay, but I'm going to do it because God says, I want to use. That. Yeah. Now, because at first I'm thinking, I don't want to use it. That, that it's not giving the fulfillment. He says, but now, now you need to use that. Now we're going to do something with it. You, yeah. I gave you that gift. I gave you that talent. I gave you that ability for a purpose. Yeah. This yeah. Is what the purpose. So I go, I'll, I'll, so I got back in the industry. I didn't know what I was going to, how I was going to use it or what was going to yeah. take place. And so I just got back, kind of uh, started skating again. I started going to contests because contest was, you know, you, that was basically, you had to be in contest in order to, to survive. To thrive in the vert pool well. That's just what yeah. you, yeah. I, I've said many times, one of the first things I ever seen was a rerun of the bluegrass aggression session. And I was like, oh, that's what skating is. It's just a bunch of guys. Tony had his crazy hair. I think Christian or whoever had cut off shit. It's kind of this whole 80s play. That's where you go and present yourself. So you had to go get back into that realm. Now you're a believer. God, I don't know what you're doing. And then what what happens? How do they well, greet you? What's different? Yeah. So at this time now, Tony Hawk is the man. Christian Asoy. All these amateurs. See, when, in the Gold Cup series, when I was at the top, all of them were amateurs. And now, so now I'm coming back in and all these guys are at the top. They're doing McTwist. I mean, all this stuff is taking place now and I'm just kind of <laughs> getting back in. And, and uh, you know, it's, it was tough. You know, I kind of worked my way. I never got to the very top again, but I still started getting it back. Mm-hmm. And so um, started skating. And then I met um, uh, a guy by the name of Andre Walton. Mm-hmm. And I knew that I wanted to use skateboard, but I didn't know how. He had a skateboard ministry, and he would go to youth groups, and he would do his freestyle because he was a freestyle, do 360s and, you know, all that stuff and flip the boards and kind of crazy stuff. And then he would just talk to the kids, give an altar call, and kids would get saved. I'm like, yeah. and now being a Christian, I'm thinking, oh, man, awesome. It's, I want to see people yeah. get saved. Every time you see somebody get saved, it's like, wow. you know, It's, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. That whole day was worthwhile. Yeah. And so, and it's like, and it was relatively new. No, nobody had ever really done it before. And it's mm-hmm. so like, and so he told me, he goes, I want you to come. I go, but you know what? I can't speak in front of you. I just, 
you know, I don't speak in front of people. He says, no, 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 just come, just tell them how you got saved. Just say, hi, my name's Eddie O'Gara. They're going to know who you are. And he mm -hmm. kind of was saying, he wanted me to come because I was more famous than he was, but yet it's yeah. he was using the ministry. I go, oh, all right. So, you know, the first couple of times I say, hi, my name's Eddie O'Gara, El Gato. And just, <laughs> you know what? I, you know, I just, um, this is how my life used to be. It's just basically what I just told you. Yeah. You know what? I just uh, gave my life to the Lord and now I'm living for God. And basically, and then I would just kind of go to the side, just a wow. little, maybe five minutes. And then he would come in and give an altar call. Kids would get saved. You were like the woman at the well who went back into the city and said, yeah. I met a man who told me everything I did. And that was enough. Yeah, yeah. You know, or I heard someone preaching, the demonized guy, he didn't go to seminary. Seminary is a great thing. Yeah. He wasn't even discipled yet. Yeah. He just went and told some folks, this yeah. guy did this. The spirit will get a hold of them. So and that, so it was cool. So then, and then he started getting more, uh, more gigs or more uh, ministry opportunities. Mm. We were going around traveling to churches around the country. Then we went to, uh, did some crusades. We did with the Billy Graham crusade. And, wow. And, uh, th and they were building vert ramps. And then they would build half pipes in, inside the church, mm -hmm. uh, mini ramps in the church. And so he would do the freestyle. <laughs> I'd do the skate. And, and then, um, so then, we went to a skate camp and uh, as part of the thing, it was, a, it was, a, it was, it was, a, I don't know if you ever went there. It was uh, Lake Owen. Wasn't it, it Visalia? It, no, Lake Owen. It was, it was the YMCA of, one or Woodward. something. It was one of them. Part no, of Woodward. It was the, the sister. That's right. Cause you mentioned something Woodward. about this years ago, but go on. So this is when there was a lot of like known amateurs or people there or something. Yeah. Yeah. So this was in, in Lake, is in uh, Lake Owen, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. And it was the sister camp of Woodward. So uh, we went there. It was a secular camp, but they would have a thing called prime time. And then they would let us, you know, it was, uh, if you wow. want to come, you could come. They're going to share their stories. And so we went there just more for one week. And then uh, the owner of the camp, he was just saying, hey, you know what? We need a camp director. What do you think about next year for 10 weeks? Come, you can do this. And um, you could... Uh, run prime time for you and i thought you know what this might be kind of cool so <laughs> for, the, for, for three years this was kind of like in uh, wow. 89 90 91 or 91 92 93 uh, 90 91 92, whatever yeah for three years though you did that yeah so, so we'd go up me and my wife and the family wow. and the kids and for you know camp for 10 so weeks. god's not only teaching you to speak he's preparing you for overseeing people uh, planning structuring pastoral Exactly. And I didn't even know that. So I would do these prime times. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd share my story every week, do, be doing these prime times. Kids would get saved. <laughs> they would go oh. back home. The, the uh, parents would say, what happened to my kid? <laughs> it, was so, it was so cool because it was like, what happened to my kid? He's all going to go to church now. And he's, he's, he's talking about God. What happened to him? And some of them like, would be mad. Some of them would be excited. Wow, that's well. So, but isn't that funny? Because I wouldn't have known what God was doing if I was looking at it then. But I think about when I came to faith, you know, and even Christian, who was a soy, who was fresh out of prison, he got to kind of do his own little, you know, seminary in in prison right. behind bars. And he obviously always says, you know, I was more free in prison than I was out. But he was like, bro, you just literally. He would take me to Santa Ana, his little uncle's church. Come share your story. And I already speak fast because I'm English, but I would go and just shout at these like 40, 50 Mexican kids who are all about to skate the ramp. Listen, guys. And he would just be like, Brian, get your story down and know what God has done and begin to share. Because I didn't think I'd ever be doing what I'm doing now. But so that begins to happen. Obviously, your wife, you got a couple of kids around, so skating's cool. And then how does it just keep progressing? Because C3 is a big ministry. I mean, Beaver Fleming is in San Diego. Wasn't Christine Kane? Didn't she used to be part of C3 Australia? Wasn't it over yeah, there as she's, well? well she's I know she's part of Hillsong, yeah. but I, wasn't C3, yeah. well, they did something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, they have a big movement out there. Well, so. Um, yeah. So. so Camp when director. I back, <laughs> yeah. What's that? Camp director. And then God keeps, yeah. So then I come back and my pastor, so he, we used to be at Rock Church. So my yeah. pastor was a church in San Bernardino called Rock Church. And he's, he's been my only pastor. So he had a church up in Lake Arrowhead, but then he, he passed it on to the associate, went down, planted the church in San Bernardino. Mm -hmm. And we started the, as the first 12 with him there. Yeah. He knew that I skated and stuff. So every year we'd leave 
And I would just get discouraged because I knew kind of like what I was saying about, um, saying about May was the lady that led me to the Lord. Yeah. She really imparted into me. I would go and I knew that people, kids would get saved, but they wouldn't follow through because I didn't yeah. have no way to plug them into churches or whatever. Yeah, they're leaving back in the mom and dad's car. You don't see them again for eight and months so, or a year. So, and I think that's where my heart for pastoring came about. And, and mm. so after the third year, uh, my pastor said, you know what? We're needing a youth pastor. The, the youth pastor we have is no longer, Eddie, you're, you're good with kids. They love you. You're part of this church. What do you think about it? And so I just, I prayed about it. I kind of knew that, yeah, this is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I had about a year's worth of uh, commitment. So I would, I'd be able to go, but come back. Yeah. So that's when I started becoming a youth pastor, um, just because of that heart for pastoring um, yeah. of young people. And you know what? One of the things is I always used to say, it says, you know what? <laughs> this is what I want to do for my, the rest of my life. I want to be a youth pastor. Because yeah. as a youth pastor, a lot of people use it as stepping stones. People I know. say, "When are you going to become a real pastor?" I said, "No, no, I'm going to be. I want a youth. I'm going to become a youth pastor because God told me to, to yeah. pastor this generation." Fourteen years of being a youth pastor. Wow. We raised our ministry up to about twelve hundred kids a week. Had staff and other associate youth pastors, and mm. uh, did all kinds of outreach and ministry. We did skate ministry, all, all kinds of stuff. Mm. But fourteen years later, God's begin to now to move on uh, done in my heart it's about you know just saying you know what we, our pastor said we want you to plant a church now it's like ah you're going to become a real pastor finally a real pastor <laughs> don't so be mad like, youth pastors don't email me i'm joking <laughs> no, no but the thing was it's like so i and i didn't want to be hypocritical it's like because i said no i'm i'm called to become the pastor of this generation yeah and god began to speak to me he says you know what and i said well how god i've been saying this all uh, this is yeah. the generation. He says, do you realize that the generation that you're going to be pastoring now were in your youth ministry? Mm-hmm. I said, okay, God. It kind of gave to me a To a release. generation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it kind of released <laughs> me. It wasn't to an age group. It was to a generation. Huh. So it kind of released me to say, okay. And so in, in 2006, we came out here to Coachella Valley. Did you bring the smoke machine with you, though? Or what? <laughs> The what? The youth smoke machine. Could you bring it with you at the time or no? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they were around yet, right? Because now it's like smoke machines and disco and so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But so you came out to, to now where you are? Yeah. To Coachella? Yeah, yeah. So we wow. always started the church, um, you know, 2006. Mm-hmm. And been pastoring uh, uh, for about a year now. This is when we became part of the C3 movement. Um, my pastor had retired. And so for me, you know, I just was looking for a covering. Yeah. Looking for uh, a part of a movement to be a part of. And it's just, yeah, I think it was good. I'm raising up my kids and I could see, um, yeah, hopefully they'll, I mean, we've talked about it and to take over and I want them to be in relationship with a movement. And so, yeah, um, yeah. We're working on that. You know, there's, there's going to be a transition here. coming. You need the covering and, and pastors, you know, I know my pastor is very shy because He's almost an introvert and wrestled with depression and stuff his whole life. But you almost need that getting out, having the covering and the dependence of other people as well. So, so you went out to, I mean, for those who don't know, Coachella is one of the biggest music festival places in the world where all the famous stars come. It's on its way to Palm Springs. So much to reach. Very, very hard. I mean, I applaud you for that. You're, I, guess, I guess you're more Israelite than I am. You know, Huntington's got the breeze and everything. Even though we had an earthquake yesterday. Did you guys feel that, the 5.5? I think I was driving, but yeah. I think people out here felt it. I felt it on the wall a little bit. So, and I say this a lot, I do not envy lead pastors. Like, if you're like, Brian, come out and do this. Okay, I've got it. You want to do a podcast for now at this time? I've got it. You want to go learn this trick? Okay. But pastoring to me, and I would do it. If God said, this is what you're going to do, I'd do it. But it's horrendous work. It you can love it. But even in the midst of this COVID Hey, Pastor Eddie, when are you opening the doors? Hey, Pastor Eddie, don't open the doors. Hey, Pastor Eddie, well, this person is talking the end times. Hey, Pastor Eddie, this. Not only do you have yourself to deal with and the the, the lessons you're going to learn through going things with your wife and your kids and just life, but you are, especially when you're the lead, you're pleasing everyone and trying to please God. So just for people listening, guys, so many people can leave a church or be offended and opposed the whole saying, you go tell everyone else about the pastor before you ever tell the pastor. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? I'm not saying that because it's something we're working through here, but yeah, that's a crazy role to go into. It's It's been what? It's been how many years now? So you said that was 2006. You've been lead pastoring since. Yeah. Wow. So 14 youth, 14. And I think there's 14 generations when we read in the new Testament, right? We see from Adam to Noah. Wait, whatever. So 28, probably about 30 years in ministry. Well, ministry started ministry about 87, so 40. Well, 40 is the number of probation, so I guess you got a good generation ahead to the Lord. 37, yeah. 40 years, no. 30 but, what, but so what's going, you're still getting a, how, how did this then, because the last five years really are six or seven, obviously Dennis Martinez, Dennis is meant to be on, I got to hit him back, we got to do something, but Dennis wasn't he the first world champion originally, you know, like freestyler crazy. And he has had a crazy ministry to prisons. He runs something that he brought to the LA system and he gets lifers out of prison. They can stay within the housing he has. I mean, he's gone into the jungles in Brazil where I think him and Bruno went to a place where two weeks earlier was a riot and people's heads were being cut off in the jungle and they went and preached the gospel to prisoners who were underground and had the tiniest bits of daylight yeah. and all these people responded, right? So yeah. how do you go from being a pastor at a pretty serious church? I mean, there's, an, there's a movement to, hey, I'm also going to get to travel and do, I mean, it's necessary. You're an evangelist, a heart in that sense. How do you juggle all of that? Yeah. And, you know, I think that you said it, you hit the nail on the head. It's like, I think in that, deep down in my heart, because I started as an evangelist, mm-hmm. it's, always, it's always been there. Yeah. So whenever I have opportunities, I just, I love to, to be, and I think it is, it's, it's, it's who you are. It's who we are Yeah. as believers. You go to the skate park and there's an opportunity. Um, I went yesterday, <laughs> the skate parks around here are close. So I drove to Redlands just to roll around for a little bit. Cause it's did open. you get to skate or did you have to stop? Cause you started witnessing to someone. Cause that's <laughs> how you know you're an evangelist. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, there's a couple of <laughs> kids there and stuff. And, Obviously, and you know what's what's amazing too? It's like here I am, almost fifty-eight years old, but yet little kids will come up and they're yeah. like, "Oh, are you sponsored?" <laughs> of course, when you drop in, I've seen you skate. I mean, you 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 skate a bowl, rip a bowl. I mean, do tricks. I mean, my kids are like, "Wait, what's this guy doing?" And then now after seeing you for years, I'm like, "Of course." So, but that's another way to reach into into their lives. Yeah. So, hey, you sponsored well, and so you say yes. I've had a history. I've been around skating again as a family breaks down the barriers so you get to redlands then these kids come up okay yeah, we just, you know start talking that now obviously you talk about the lord and but just going yeah. like to brazil and there's opportunities to go and uh, to, I, I don't go to the prisons I'll leave yeah that yeah I, i'll leave that to dennis but yeah uh, or, you know do you go to italy or just i mean this um uh, you know what i love it was amazing too just going to israel yeah be able to skate and there's like 20 some 28 skate parks in israel and so it was kind of cool just to go there and just be in. 28 skate parks yeah. in Israel? Yeah. Just going on I, the Holy Land and just being there, just, oh, skate for Jesus would have skated. Yeah, I haven't, been, I haven't been to Israel yet. I keep meaning oh. to go, and then this whole thing kicked off, and oh. I get invited by so many different people. I'm like, well, who would I go with to get the best experience? I want to hear the most, but get to relax and enjoy the most. That's it. Yeah, there's a we couple need to people. travel together sometime. I know. We need to go on a trip someplace. I know. I know. Well, I'm still. I'm antsy now because you know I I like to go. So my my son, <laughs> uh, one of my sons works at the airport. Okay. So he gets it for the United, so he gets flight benefits. So that's why I get yeah. to go a lot. So it's like. I, How I'm can like, you not go? Like, yeah. I'm like, I'm like I want to go. <laughs> but also, when you come back, when Pastor comes back, I mean, I know our pastor doesn't. He doesn't like to fly. He'll go for a wedding or something. He's like, leave me alone. But when I go travel and come back, there's something about walking into the home church and hearing those songs and seeing those people yeah. and getting coffee off so-and-so or whatever. But then you're refreshed to pour yourself out. Like when I go, I mean, I've said this, I'll go to Costa Rica for 10 days. You preach nine or 10 times. And I'm literally like, Lord, I had no idea when I was this book tooth kid in England, this is what I would be doing. Yeah. I mean, it's full-time ministry. And even now, you've definitely seen the benefits I said this a few episodes ago, but I was on a Zoom call with a kid in the Philippines that just simply said, hey, would you mind jumping on this Zoom? Um, we've never done this before. We'd love to do it. There was 100 kids almost on it. 
and they don't get to go out of their house but twice a week. So whether they're tuning in because there's a pro skater or whether it's because this is American or whether as a pastor, but they sat for an hour and a half, like two hours, and afterwards they message me. Hey, pastor, you know, they all talk very like, like, like Brazilians. Pastor, they always make sure that the, the title's there. But I'm saying, here's this kid in the Philippines that using media like we're using, and even we're talking about evangelism. Guys, this podcast all about evangelism. It wasn't going to reach people and encourage them. So now you've, you went to Brazil a load. You were even in Australia a lot, right, for the Bondi Bowl and seeing a lot of – I know my friends out there were like Pastor Eddie's in town. So what is moving forward? I mean – you opened us up with some verses from one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. Today, moving forward, you and your wife just like, all right, whatever's next. Are you able to gather as a church yet? Or did you just do it this past uh, yeah, week? Last, or? last Sunday. Okay. And, you know, and, and it is. Everything's changing day by day. Who knows? Like, I think in next week, they're supposed to say yay or nay or yeah. like, cut back or whatever. So wow. uh, we're just kind of just taking it. Uh, day by day, we're we're definitely upping our 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 streaming. Yeah, um, we're focusing more. Um, we we've invested some some finances to make that be better. We've always mm. done it, but just to make it better a uh, better experience because we don't you know who knows yeah who knows what the church is going to look like. But I know I did hear and I said it a few weeks ago, but I heard the Target many Targets sold out of Bibles. So amen. I know most online streaming is going through the roof. Yeah. I know a lot of people are starting to read the book of Revelation. And some of the even homeless people I've shared with downtown, they'll go, I don't believe yet, but I know I'm not taking no mark of the beast. So yeah, yeah, yeah. the Lord is getting a hold of people. And if anything, you know, I even went in a store today and I seen some of the surfboards and whatever else. And there was even like a, a, a knife gun section. And literally it said it at a massive sign, it said, hey, in, and I thought it was amazing. Because many people are going in there to look for guns, but they said, hey, if you were in this season and feeling depressed or suicidal, please call. Uh, and I was like, man, when Big Five is putting that sign up, whether that's just the, the manager who's got a heart for those who are struggling, whether it's a believer in there, but that's where we are. So I know you started with talking about, you know, the hope that we have in the rest, but what would you as a pastor, I'm holding this together. You know, I trust the Lord, my wife, my kids, we're living this thing out. But what would you say to that old skate guy right now is in North Carolina or the, or Australia or just, just mad, doesn't know anything. Where's the encouragement for him? And then as believers, you know, what would you say? Um, I just, you know, basically just say, you know, um, you see that what's, what's going on and, and I'm mm-hmm. sure it could be discouraging. I'm sure it could be frustrating. I'm sure yeah. it could even be angry with God. Um, God, why, if there is a God, and that's the thing is, is when I first started off is yeah. a, a man of God, a prophet was just saying, God, where are you? What, what's happening? Why is this taking place? And, you know, I just always have to put it back. It says, you know, God, God knows the bigger picture. Yeah. And we, we, I, I have to just trust him. Yeah. So, you know, if you've never known the Lord, you yeah. haven't trusted God and you just, I, I, you know, my, my thing is just put it out there and just just take a step of faith. And that's what Amen. Christianity is all about. It's just, it's it's faith. Mm-hmm. And you, you can't, don't wait till you can see it. Don't wait till you can feel it. Don't wait till you can uh, mm-hmm. tangibly experience it. But just a step of faith. Okay, God, I'm just going to trust you. I'm going to trust in your son, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. I don't know everything. And that's the thing is, is, as I always tell people, you don't need to know everything because you'll never know everything. Yeah. And yeah, we're still learning like, stuff even here and now. It's just using this verse or we're saying that we're like we're unpacking new things daily. And I just, you know, back in 1983 when I said yes to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was a couple years there. I was like, it was sketchy. It was hard. I, but I pushed through. But I, it's been the best decision that I've ever made in my life. Mm. Since 1983, Jesus Christ has been Lord and Savior of my life. And I just as a world champion skateboarder yeah. look to that to be part of my life is as my identity. Now my identity as a son, one of God's kids. Amen. And so, um, you know, if, if anybody's out there and just, you know, you, yeah. maybe you did at one time, but you've kind of walked away. Hey, just mm-hmm. say, God, just come back. I want, I want to, I want to get on fire for you. Mm-hmm. And I think, and I believe if you're watching out there, 
you're not watching by accident, you're not watching by mistake. I, I really believe with all my heart that the, there's someone out there that that God wants to use you in a powerful way, mm-hmm. especially right now when many people can't meet in a building, mm-hmm. but yet you have influence with people that are hurting, that are discouraged, that are depressed. Mm-hmm. And the hope is not in the government. We pray for them. Our hope yeah. is not in a paycheck. Many of you may have lost jobs. It may make, our, our hope is in Jesus Christ. Man. And I just challenge those of you that are maybe watching just to, to mm-hmm. put your hope in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Don't Amen. put your hope in this world because this world will fail. Mm-hmm. And guys, as you listen to, to Pastor Eddie, he's not saying this as, well, Eddie and Brian came to faith and life is every wave is perfect and every trick in our career, but every good and perfect thing comes from the Lord. What we're saying is, and I didn't understand this coming from England, well, isn't God meant to make my life better? Isn't it all about now? No, ultimately it's about after this life is gone and we've passed, we escape judgment. We've been forgiven through Jesus that's what the cross is for. Someone had to pay the price, and the only one that could do it was Jesus Christ, God in the flesh himself. We read through Romans and Hebrews. Yeah. But now while we're here, here's this man, Eddie and his wife and their kids, and they're serving him. And it's not always perfect. It doesn't always make sense. Even the prophet's asking, Lord, why aren't you listening? God's God, we are not. But just as Pastor Eddie said, as you hear this, God is good. God is faithful. He can forgive our sins. He can set us free. Um, I loved my skate career, but there's nothing like walking with Jesus. And if God used that in this season, thank you, Lord, for redeeming something we love. But for those who are out there and you're, I mean, how many people sadly might take their lives because of this season? Like you said, paychecks. Well, money's not really God. Or they just can't deal with who might break into the house. God's the author of life. God is faithful. Get to know him. Open up that book. Get planted in a church. Get around a pastor that will will hang out with you and love you and spend time with you so you can grow. Because, guys, I didn't grow up with Eddie. He didn't grow up with me. We're just skaters. We've probably seen each other in magazines, and we have the same friends. But we're brothers now in the Lord. Like Ray Barbie a few episodes ago, like Jamie Thomas. If you haven't figured out by now, this is God speaking to you through some podcast while we sit and giggle. But really, the Lord is getting you. So <laughs> anything you want to say? Yeah, just maybe one last uh, word. I, I feel led of the Lord. I think there's some people out there um, that I, for, this is a word for you. And you know who you are if, once you start hearing me. You've um, come to a place in your life where a door has been closed, an opportunity has been closed. And you put your heart and your hope and your trust in that door that was open might have been a job might have been a career uh, might have been a relationship but whenever a door is closed god is going to open another door for you and it's the open door that is there waiting but you need to realize that it's god that is allowing you to walk through that door and it's going to be a better door And so I just want you to know that, um, you know, David in the Bible, he was out watching sheep and the door closed for that day. And he had to put a little work in to go listen to his dad, go visit the, 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 the battlefield and visit his brothers and take them cheese and bread. But an opportunity opened up for him to slay this giant. And because of that first door that he was in, man, he was preparing. But if he never would have walked through the new door, he would have never been able to slay that giant Mm. and begin to propel Mm. uh, who he was meant to be, who God created him to be. And I love Mm. what the Bible says in Acts the 13th chapter. It says, David served his generation. And Mm. so David did what he was called to do on this earth by going through Mm -hmm opportunities that God brought his way and walking mm-hmm. through those open doors, not staying stuck at mm-hmm. an old place, but realizing God was going to do something new. So anyway, if that's yeah. you know that the door may have closed, but God has a better door for you ready for you to walk through. 
And guys, we are his workmanship, Ephesians says, and that means David shepherded well and defeated many of the adversaries, and then God would ultimately use this man to be king. Whether we're meant to be kings or queens or whatever, that's between the Lord and how he leads us. What Pastor Eddie is saying is that as we reach out and take hold of what God has given us serving, we step into our identity, and it's all for his glory. So skating through Zoom, through the roads, through the midst of a virus, and sadly, the riots and the rest. I'm going to jump into that on the next podcast. But, Eddie, would you mind just just closing us in prayer and encourage people, and then we'll get on with the season, and I hope many come to know the Lord. So thanks for your time. It's been – I hope there's enough skate history for people, but they get to know someone that pastors a lot of people and loves a lot of people, and not to build up the man, but we should encourage each other. But this is the work that God really – traded us for so i want to thank you for i, I know we've been planning this for a long time it's like it's just never gonna happen but I'm no. glad it did. amen uh, father god i just thank you lord father right now in jesus name and i just thank you for this opportunity that you uh given me just to share father yes, god lord. what you have been doing in my life i thank you for brian and his family and mm. podcast and i pray father that those that are listening i pray that they would be encouraged <laughs> and know that there is hope Father God, that, that you are there in the midst. Father, yes, you Lord. are there in the fire. You are there in the storm. Yes, Father, God. I just pray right now in Jesus' name that the Spirit of God would be touching and moving on their hearts, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, I thank you that this mm. Father God podcast is going to go out and uh, touch and change lives. Amen. In Jesus' mighty and precious name, mm. everyone said amen. Amen. <laughs> Gotta skate. Gotta skate. <laughs> well, guys, this is Pastor Eddie and Brian, and we are only affirming the truth. First Corinthians 118. The message of the cross is foolishness <laughs> to those that are perishing, but to us who are being saved. It's the power of God. Life is a vapor. It will be gone before we know it. Get to know your Lord and Savior. He's called us in that relationship. Um, it's amaz- amazing to hear from you, brother. Say hi to the family and everyone. Yeah. Um, for those listening, um, go on YouTube if you want to watch this, uh, share it. There's so many skaters or hurting people out there that need to hear encouragement, but most importantly, the truth of God's word. Um, it's alive and living. We love you. And Pastor Eddie, how can people get a hold of you? Last thing. Um, well, Instagram uh, or Eddie Algera. E D D I E E L. U-E-R-A. Go over, hit up Pastor Eddie, uh, follow him on his travels. A lot of ministries yeah. doing a lot of skating. We're a demon. What cultures oftentimes use them for what's bad. So we love you all. Well, God bless actually, you all. Uh, yeah, Sundays the church. Are, are, uh, uh, for church is uh, it's, uh, c3ps.church. C3ps.church. Yeah. All right. And guys, if you're out there, Palm Springs, Coachella yeah. area. Come visit. Go by and say, I heard you, Pastor Eddie, on that podcast. I want to give you a hug and get in there and get some praying. So, all right, all right brother. God bless. All right, brother, God bless you. Let's see. We got to go traveling soon. Let's do when it. it. When it opens up, let's go. <laughs> let's get on a plane and hit it. Amen. All right.